Hey everyone! Welcome back! Thanks for joining us! Today we've got a brand new story to share with you. So let's begin. The last rays of the sun dipped below the horizon as I stepped off the bus, the familiar scent of home filling my lungs like a long-lost memory. I had spent years in the unforgiving embrace of the military, a world defined by discipline and chaos, and now I was finally free to reclaim my life. But freedom can be deceptive. I, I could feel the weight of change in the air, a tension that prickled at the back of my neck. Hey, Marine. A voice called out, breaking through my thoughts. It was Lieutenant Gregson, a buddy from my old unit. He approached with a grin, his hands shoved deep into his pockets. You made it back in one piece. I was starting to wonder if you'd ever stop chasing ghosts. Ghosts don't haunt me? I replied, forcing a smile that didn't quite reach my eyes. I'm here now, though. What's the scene? Gregson shrugged, his expression shifting from jovial to somber. You know how it is. Life goes on. But. It might be good to check in on your wife. Heard some things. Things? My gut twisted. What kind of things? Just rumors. Nothing concrete. You know how small towns are. He hesitated, his eyes searching mine for something. Just. Be careful, man. You're a hero around here. But you know how that can turn. I nodded, my heart sinking. Thanks for the heads up. As Gregson walked away. I felt the familiar clench of anxiety in my gut. I hadn't been home long enough for the shadows of betrayal to creep in, but the tightening in my chest told me otherwise. I drove down the quiet streets, past the houses where memories lingered like ghosts. When I reached my own home, a sense of foreboding washed over me. The door swung open, and my wife, Jenna, stood there with a smile that felt rehearsed. You're home. Finally. Her arms wrapped around me, but I could sense something behind her eyes. A flicker of something I couldn't quite place. Yeah, I'm back, I said, pulling her in closer, the warmth of her body familiar yet distant. How have you been? Oh, you know, just the usual. Work. Taking care of things around here. She stepped back, her smile still plastered across her face, but her gaze darted away for a moment. Let's celebrate tonight. I made your favorite meal. I forced a smile, but unease coiled tighter inside me. Sounds great. Dinner came and went. Filled with forced laughter that echoed hollowly against the walls. Jenna's phone buzzed repeatedly, each vibration sending a cold shiver down my spine. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off, but I pushed it aside. Maybe I was just paranoid after years of combat and deception. Later that night, as I lay in bed, my mind raced. I glanced over at Jenna. Her back turned toward me. I wanted to reach out, to pull her close, but something held me back. I could hear the faint sound of her phone vibrating again, and the feeling of dread settled deeper. I closed my eyes, trying to shake it off, but sleep eluded me. The next morning, I grabbed my phone and called Gregson. Hey, it's me. You still around? Yeah, I'm here. What's up? I need you to do some digging for me. I've got a feeling something's not right with Jenna. On it. I'll let you know what I find. The day dragged on, and I felt the walls closing in. Jenna was vibrant and cheerful, but beneath the surface, there was a current of tension. I caught her sneaking glances at her phone more than once, her expression shifting from excitement to anxiety. A gnawing suspicion settled in my gut. You okay? I asked during dinner, leaning forward to catch her gaze. Of course. Just. She paused, her eyes flickering. Just a lot on my mind with work. You know? Right? I studied her, searching for signs. But she was a master of disguise. I'm here if you need to talk. She waved her hand dismissively, a nervous laugh escaping her lips. I'm fine. Really? 
As the days passed, my unease deepened. Gregson's updates came in sporadically at first. But soon they became more alarming. You are right, brother. I've been talking to some folks. Word is, Jen has been spending a lot of time with someone else. Someone named Rick. Rick. The name echoed in my head like a gunshot. I clenched my fists, the realization hitting me like a punch to the gut. What kind of time? Intimate. They've been seen together. A lot. Damn it, I muttered, my heart racing. I need to know more. Find out what the hell is going on. Will do. Just stay cool, alright? Don't do anything rash. I won't. But the words felt hollow. That night, I lay awake. Rage and betrayal swirling within me. I couldn't confront her, not yet. I needed to think strategically. I was a marine trained to endure and outsmart. I wouldn't let my emotions dictate my actions. The following day, I decided to test the waters. I took a different route home, stopping by a small cafe where I knew Jenna would often grab lunch. The bell above the door jingled as I stepped inside, scanning the room for familiar faces. And then I spotted her. Jenna was sitting across the table from him, Rick. They leaned in close, laughing, their chemistry palpable. My blood boiled. I couldn't hear their conversation, but the way she looked at him, the way her laughter flowed like water, felt like a knife twisting in my gut. I stepped outside, my heart racing as I pulled out my phone. Gregson, I said when he answered, I need you to do something for me. I need to know everything about Rick. Where he works, his finances, everything. On it. Just stay calm. Calm? I laughed bitterly. I'll be calm when I've dealt with this. I hung up my mind racing. I needed more than just information. I needed a plan. I couldn't just confront Jenna. She would twist it, manipulate it. I had to be calculated just like in the field. That night I confronted her. Where were you today? Jenna looked up from her phone. Feigning innocence. Just out. Why? Just curious. I saw you at the cafe with Rick. Her face paled, and for a moment, I saw a flicker of fear. Oh that. We were just talking about work. Talking. I leaned closer, my voice low. You don't talk that closely with someone who's just a colleague, Jenna. It's not what you think, she protested, her voice rising. You're being paranoid. Paranoid? Paranoid. I felt my control slipping. I fought in wars, Jenna. I know how to read people. You'd be wise to remember that. Stop it, she hissed, her eyes narrowing. You don't understand anything about my life now. Then enlighten me. I shot back, the anger bubbling, because what I see looks like betrayal. The tension in the room thickened, suffocating. Jenna's expression shifted, and for the first time, I saw her mask slip. The anger melted into something darker. You think you can demand answers from me? You think you have any power here? Power? I scoffed. You've underestimated me, Jenna. You think I'm just some clueless civilian now, but I'm still a Marine. I know how to fight back. She laughed. A bitter, cold sound. Fight back? You think that's going to change anything? I'm done with you. I felt the weight of her words settle like lead in my chest. You're making a mistake, I warned, trying to keep my voice steady. You don't know who you're messing with. Her laughter faded. Replaced by an icy glare. What are you going to do? Call your marine buddies? They can't help you now. Watch me. I muttered, the determination electrifying my veins. The following days were a blur of preparation. I reached out to my brothers, gathering information and resources. Gregson was my right hand, digging deep into every aspect of Rick's life. 
I learned that he was a local businessman with a shady past. His dealings were murky, and there were whispers of illegal activities I felt a sense of calm settle as I plotted my course betrayal would not go unpunished on a Friday night I gathered my brothers at a secluded location gentlemen I began, their eyes focused intently on me. We're here because I need your help. I've been betrayed by someone I trusted, and we're going to make sure they understand the consequences of their actions. Who? One of them asked, an edge of curiosity in his voice. Jenna and her accomplice. Rick? I said, my voice steady. They think they've won. But they have no idea what they're up against. What's the plan? Gregson leaned forward. A glint of excitement in his eyes. We'll hit them where it hurts. Their business, their reputation, and their lives. We'll expose Rick for the fraud he is and make sure everyone knows what Jenna has done. The room erupted in murmurs of agreement. Let's do it. One of my brothers growled, a fierce determination in his gaze. The following week felt like a whirlwind. I watched as my brothers moved with precision. Dismantling Rick's business from the inside out. Financial records were leaked, connections severed, and soon, Rick was reeling from the fallout. His accounts froze, and his reputation crumbled like ash. Jenna, meanwhile, remained blissfully unaware of the storm brewing around her. She continued her charade, convinced that I was still the clueless husband she could manipulate. One evening, I confronted her again. How's work going? I asked, feigning casual interest. It's fine, she replied, her tone clipped. Why do you ask? Just curious. I heard some rumors about Rick's business. Something about financial troubles? Her eyes darted, and I could see the panic flicker beneath her calm facade. That's just gossip. You know how people are. Gossip? I leaned in, my voice low. Seems a little more serious than that. I think it's time you start telling the truth. I am telling the truth. She snapped. But I could see the cracks forming. Not for long, I said, my voice steady. Soon, everyone will know who you really are. The tension escalated, and I could see the fear creeping into her eyes. The realization that everything she built was beginning to unravel. Days later, I received a call from Gregson. You're not going to believe this, he said. Excitement buzzing in his voice. I got my hands on some information that could be the final nail in the coffin for Rick. What do you have? I asked my pulse quickening. Evidence of his illegal dealings. Tax evasion, money laundering, you name it. We can take him down hard. Let's do it. I said. A cold smile creeping onto my face. Make sure it's public. The plan unfolded like clockwork. We leaked the information to local news outlets, and within 24 hours, Rick's world came crashing down. Headlines screamed of scandal, and the fallout was swift. Jenna was blindsided. I watched as she paced our living room. Her phone glued to her ear, bewilderment etched across her face. You don't understand. I didn't know. I swear. She shouted into the phone, but there was no sympathy in the voice on the other end. Everything okay? I asked, my voice dripping with false concern. Shut up, she spat, spinning to face me. This is all your fault. You did this. Me? I leaned back against the wall, crossing my arms. I'm just a Marine, Jenna. You're the one who made this mess. Her expression shifted from anger to desperation. I can fix this. Just give me time. Time. I laughed bitterly. You've had all the time you needed, and look where it got you, on the brink of destruction. As the days dragged on, Rick's downfall spiraled out of control. Jenna's world became a prison of her own making, and I reveled in her unraveling. Friends turned against her, whispers of her betrayal spreading like wildfire. I watched her crumble, the confidence she once wore like armor dissolving into despair. Finally, the day of reckoning arrived. 
I gathered my brothers one last time, a silent pact forming between us. Tonight, I said, my voice steady, we finish this. We arrived at Jenna's place. The moonlight casting long shadows across the driveway. I felt the adrenaline coursing through me, a sense of power and impending justice. As we approached the door, I knocked firmly. The sound echoed through the empty night, reverberating like a drum. Moments later, Jenna opened the door, her eyes whitening in shock. What are you doing here? She stammered, her voice shaky. Time to talk, I said, stepping inside with my brothers flanking me. What do you want, she demanded, but the facade had crumbled. I want you to understand the consequences of your actions, I said, my voice low and steady. You thought you could betray me without repercussions, but you forgot what I am. What you are, she laughed, but it was hollow. Fear creeping into her laughter. A marine? You think that matters now? It matters more than you know. I glanced at my brothers, who stood as silent sentinels, ready to enforce the gravity of my words. Rick's done. Your perfect life is collapsing, and soon you'll be left with nothing. You can't run from this. She stepped back, panic flashing in her eyes. No, you can't do this. I'll fight back. Fight back, I echoed, taking a step closer. You've lost that war. This is your reckoning. In that moment, I saw the truth in her eyes. A realization that she was trapped, her life unraveling like a frayed rope. Please, she begged, her voice breaking. I didn't mean for it to go this far. I thought. You thought wrong. I interrupted, my gaze unwavering. You betrayed your husband. You betrayed your family. And now it's time for the world to see who you really are. Her facade shattered, and I watched as the weight of her actions crashed down upon her. I stepped back, my brother shifting behind me, a silent wall of strength. With a final, cold smile, I delivered the words that sealed her fate. Aura. As I turned to leave, I felt the weight lift from my shoulders. I had reclaimed my honor, my brothers beside me as we walked away from the wreckage of what was once my life. Outside, the night air felt fresh, a new beginning waiting just beyond the horizon. I had endured, and in the face of betrayal I had emerged stronger. And as we disappeared into the shadows, I knew one thing for certain, I once a marine, always a marine. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more stories like this. See you next time.